we can create the Lewis structure for the bromate ion BrO3- and use that to figure out the geometry of the molecule. Now, um, to be completely straightforward about this, what we're going to do is we're going to build a Lewis structure, do a little bit of, of uh, just a tiny amount of calculation to figure out how many electrons are involved and um, we're going to keep checking to see if that Lewis structure minimizes formal charge or not. So let's go through the process. Uh, this formula has one bromine, three oxygens, and a minus charge. So each of these is going to contribute electrons to the valence bonding and non-bonding electrons. Let's go take a look at the periodic table. So we find bromine in the seventh column. It has seven valence electrons. And we find oxygen in the sixth column. It has six valence electrons. So what this means is that we are going to have seven electrons from the bromine, because there's one of them, and it brings seven electrons in its valence shell as a neutral element, neutral atom. Oxygen, each neutral oxygen has six valence electrons. There are three of them, so that's 18 total. And then this minus charge, that minus charge means there's an extra electron above and beyond the neutral elements, the neutral atoms that are listed in the formula. So that's an additional electron. You add all these up, you get 26 electrons total, valence electrons that are going to be involved in the Lewis structure picture. Now, uh, from there, we can also figure out kind of a minimum number of bonds. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the octet rule. The bromine wants to be surrounded by at least eight electrons. The reason why I say at least eight electrons is because it is in this fourth row of the periodic table. Uh, remember that hydrogen wants to fill a duet or two electrons around its nucleus um, and that the main group elements of these other rows want to have an octet. Now um, in this second column, the max number of electrons that can surround, sorry, the second row, the max number of electrons that can surround elements in the second row is eight. That's only, the, they only have a 2s and three 2p orbitals, so that's four orbitals, two electrons each, so that's eight uh, electrons that can fill around those, that can fill in those uh, orbitals. That's it. Um, if you go to the third row and beyond, they have more. They have more orbitals that could be filled. So I say that bromine wants to have at least eight electrons because it could technically have more surrounding it. Oxygen, though, wants to have exactly eight electrons surrounding it. It can't have more. So if I go back to our calculation, um, I'm just going to come up with a minimum number of electrons that these elements want to surround themselves with, and we will use the Lewis structure and formal charge to kind of figure out exactly how many electrons are going to be around that bromine. We can, however, estimate what is going to happen, or at least like what bon minimum bonding has to happen to complete these octets. Uh, so the minimum amount of bonding that's going to happen in this molecule is three bonds. Uh, I calculated that by saying, well, the difference between what they want and what they have is going to have to be made up by sharing, and that's six electrons that will have to be shared in bonds. There are two electrons per bond, so that means three bonds minimum. There could be more in this molecule. There could be uh, just three. We'll have to find out. Um, we're going to use bromine as the central atom in this Lewis structure. The reason why I can say that is because, one, there's a lot of oxygen in just one bromine, so that's a good idea to put the bromine in the middle. Another reason why is because it's listed first, which again is a good indication. And then finally, it's more electropositive than oxygen is. Oxygen is more electronegative, so in general, the least electronegative element is going to be in the middle. Okay, so I've just written in bromine and three oxygens. The bromine has starts with seven valence electrons. Each oxygen starts with six. Now, at this point, you should find that I've created an error. And what we can do here is we can just double check to make sure the number of valence electrons is the same as the number of valence electrons I just drew out. So there's six per oxygen, that's 18, plus seven, that's 25. I'm one short. Why? Because I didn't write the extra one. So I'm just gonna write an extra electron that corresponds to that minus charge, 
here next on the bromine and now I have the right number of electrons. So what do we do next? Let's check our octets. Notice that this oxygen is surrounded by just six electrons, so it needs more. This bromine already has eight, it doesn't need more. This oxygen already just has six, it needs two more. This oxygen needs two more. So what I'm going to do is just to get the ball rolling, I'm gonna move this electron here so it doesn't get ugly. And I'm just gonna take pairs of electrons from the bromine and make a bond between oxygen and bromine. Okay, so at this point, all I've done is I've just converted those lone pairs around the bromine into bonds. I've moved electrons around. I have not erased any electrons. If there were electrons that were in lone pairs that I used to bond, I erased the lone pair and I created a bond. I am not trying to change the number of electrons here. In fact, if I do, I'd probably get it wrong. So be careful when you're doing this. Make sure that whenever you create a bond, you're destroying two electrons and you're not like increasing the number of electrons overall. Okay, so let's start calculating formal charges uh, because at this point all the octets are full, right? There's two, four, six, plus two uh, electrons around the bromine, so that's eight, it's octets full. This oxygen has a full octet because it has six non-bonding electrons and two bonding electrons surrounding it, so it's octet is full and all these other oxygens are symmetric or the same. So really what we have to ask here is is there a better Lewis structure to draw and how do we get there based on just formal charges? We're done with the octets. We need to figure out if formal charges can be optimized. Okay, so this is the formal charge calculation for each of the elements, bromine and oxygen. And I'm treating the, two, the three oxygens the same because they're all symmetric. They have the same um, bonding and lone pair picture. So how does this work? You take the number of valence electrons from the neutral element so in the case of bromine, it starts with seven electrons. In the case of oxygen, it starts with six. And then you subtract electrons that surround it. And what we do is we say that there's, for like each lone pair electron, each non-bonding electron that's around this oxygen, counts towards its total. But we only say that half the bonding electrons uh, for this oxygen contribute to its total. So what we're saying is that this bond is effectively accounted for as being cut in half. half. One of the electrons goes to the oxygen, one goes to bromine. That's where this um, 2 over 2 and 6 over 2 number comes from. So in the case of bromine, it starts with 7 electrons. This picture shows that it has just 2 non-bonding electrons. That's where this 2 comes from. And then the 6 comes from the 6 bonding electrons in these three, these three bonds. And we divide that by 2. We add that to the non-bonding count. And we end up getting that there are a accounting amount of five electrons surrounding this bromine. You subtract seven from it and you get a plus two formal charge. For oxygen, you go through the same calculus and you end up getting a minus one formal charge for each oxygen. So there's probably a way to remedy this because we're allowed to add extra bonds and increase the number of electrons surrounding the bromine beyond eight. And what we need to be doing is taking electrons from this oxygen, from, from maybe more than one of these oxygens, and um, not removing them from the oxygen because we don't want to like uh, violate the octet rule, but we want to share some of these more with the bromine so that the formal charge of the bromine goes up and the formal charge of the, or I should say goes down, becomes more negative, has more electron around it, and the formal charge of the oxygen uh, goes up. It becomes less uh, electron rich. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two of these non-bonding electrons and turn them into bonding electrons. Now what we've done here is we've kind of created two different kinds of oxygens. So these oxygens over here still have the same formal charge as before, but this oxygen is going to have a different formal charge. So how are we going to change the formal charge calculation for this new double bonded oxygen? Well, what we're going to have to do is we are going to change the number of non-bonding electrons. So instead of it being six, now there's just four around it, right? Because there's two pairs. So that's going to be a four. And instead of there being a two for just one bond with two electrons, two bonding electrons. It's going to be four bonding electrons because there's two bonds. 
So if you do the calculation, 4 plus 4 over 2 is uh, 6. So 6 minus 6 is just 0. So we've effectively changed the... Um, what about bromine? Well, um, we changed the bonding and the surrounding electrons around bromine as well. Uh, it still has two non-bonding electrons, but it now has eight bonding electrons from these four different bonds. So we have to change the six to an eight, and we end up finding that we've reduced, or sorry, we've, uh, that's the right word, we've reduced the formal charge by one, so we end up getting just one. And if we repeat this process again, and, and if we take two of these electrons that are non-bonding on this oxygen, and we create a bond, make this single bond a double bond, uh, we'll now have two oxygens with zero formal charge, one oxygen with the minus one formal charge, this one that has just one bond and six non-bonding electrons, that one has the minus one formal charge. These guys though, the ones that are double bonded have a zero formal charge, and we have to change, recalculate the bromine formal charge. So this thing now has 10, because there's five bonds around it, 10 bonding electrons. It still has this lone pair for two non-bonding electrons. So I have to change this 8 to a 10. Okay. And 2 plus 10 over 2, that's 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. So I get a formal charge of 0 for the bromine in the center. And... If I was to label the formal charges, I'd see that this one has a minus one charge. The overall charge is minus one. These all have zero charges. So this makes sense because we wanted a structure that has an overall minus charge, and we do have a structure that has an overall minus charge. Um, let's check some other things just to make sure the structure makes sense. We did minimize formal charges. We used to have uh, much higher formal charges. We've dropped them. Are the octets filled for the oxygens? Yes. This oxygen has four non-bonding electrons and four bonding, so that's eight total surrounding this oxygen for a octet. And uh, the same for this oxygen, its octet is filled because it has six non-bonding electrons and two bonding, so that's eight total electrons around that oxygen. Finally, this bromine has a super, it's a expanded valence uh, bromine. It has more than eight electrons, but that's okay because it's not that second row element it's a fourth row element so that's fine it's if it's third or lower row we can have expanded valence um, and it's probably good just to double check do we have the right number of electrons there's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen non-bonding electrons and ten bonding electrons so that's 26 electrons total which is what we started with so we're not playing any weird uh, phony baloney bad accounting. Um, let's think about what this Lewis structure means for the geometry of bromate. There are four places where electrons are found around this bromine, the central bromine. So one place is this lone pair, one place is this double bond, one place is this double bond, and one place is this single bond. So that's four places. Four places corresponds to a tetrahedral geometry. We're not going to call this tetrahedral because it only has three elements bonded to the central atom. We will call this trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal is like a tetrahedron with the top site occupied by a lone pair or somehow vacant. So let's take a look at what this looks like. In so the bromate structure in 3D is going to look like this. You would draw it with wedges and dashes to indicate that the oxygens are going out, uh, in and out of the plane respectively, and you draw this with just a regular line to indicate that it's in the plane of the paper, and the lone pair would also be in the plane of the paper. So you're indicating here that it's a trigonal pyramidal structure instead of a trigonal planar structure, and you would expect that uh, from the parent geometry that the, that the uh, bond angle would be 109 for a tetrahedron, and in fact it's going to be a little bit less because this lone pair 
is a little bit closer and more spread out on the bromine than these bonded oxygens, so you expect it to have a 104 roughly um, bond angle. So the extra space this takes up presses these down towards each other more and makes the bond angle between each oxygen with the bromine as the vertex a little bit smaller. And that's really how you start from the structure, or sorry, get start from the uh, formula and how you get all the way to the um, molecular geometry based on valence shell electron pair repulsion theory.